gentlemen and disappointments. We are coming to you live from the Woman Caves in New York and Connecticut. My name is Leslie. And my name is Melissa. And we are Verbally Disastrous. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is part B, which is episode 18, Favorite Childhood Memories. Now, House is going to share one of his favorite memories. Come check it out. My fondest memory is when my father came to my school and says to me, um, look, you're, you're going to be in 12th grade, but you're going to have 10th grade classes. So you got an option. You're going to stay there in the school or you're going to come to work if they put a glove and a book in front of me so I picked the gloves I went to work I thought about it had I stayed I could imagine me graduating with my sister who was like what three years younger than me I'm graduating with her and everybody's happy and a you know big party and everyone's gathering around me happy that I graduated and she's jealous because she really graduated on time I'm the fucking super senior <laughs> I didn't want to go for it. It's, it was super, super senior. Super yeah, senior. Super, super, double, yeah, super, super senior, yes. And I, and I said, you know what? I don't want to go through that. I want to make her happy. I'm going to have her all the time. Because I'm telling you, had that happened, we graduated together. I, I couldn't even see myself walking the line with my little sister. That would be crazy. So, yeah, I went to work. So you, you opted to not graduate high school? Did you go get your GED later on? Oh, yeah, I got my GED. Gotcha. How, how many years after that point of working did you say, fuck it, I need to go get my GED? Four years. Wow. Four years after. Yeah, I failed it twice and I got to the last go. I was such a nerd in school. I had like a 4.0, 3.9 or something like that. The thought of uh, walking away was uh, something that, I, that would have been obscene to me. Couldn't imagine. I grew up poor, for the record. I didn't even realize I was poor until I was probably high school, when you know everybody starts dressing in certain shit, and my dad's like, "Uh, let's go to this spot and get ten dollar stuff." And you're looking and going, "Wait a minute, everybody's got Nike and name brands." I got a pair of Nikes out of the lost and found box. That was my first pair of Nikes my senior year. <laughs> so that's when you realized you were poor. Yeah, you know, it was one of those things that you don't really realize until you start thinking about shit like a classic example I had three stepbrothers that were really cool growing up so there's my sister and I so there's five seven of us walking the roads trying to find cans and we made it like it was fun like see who could pick out the most cans you know who could get them the most and at the re end of the evening we would all get nachos and then make sure we get the chili with the nachos. So it was something that you realize we were a bunch of broke motherfuckers alongside the road picking up cans. <laughs> but you didn't know it because they made it into let's make it as a game, like a, a fun outing or whatever. You guys remember going on vacation or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. we went to Puerto Rico. Oh, shit. I remember we went to Puerto Rico when we were kids. I still got a picture of it. I still got a picture of us on surfboards. Me, my little sister, and my brother. And we went to Puerto Rico, and we had a good time. I remember being in Puerto Rico having fun. Did you check oh, out the ladies? Oh, you had bus trips? I, know I was young. At that age. <laughs> no, you weren't looking at the ladies in Puerto Rico while you were down there? No, I was going to do this for them to run, play, run, catch, and kiss <laughs> <laughs> Probably at that time, they probably still had grass houses. <laughs> Shout out to I remember my parents allowed me to take a sip, a tiny sip of a pina colada. And that was it. I remember that. That's what started you on your tirade of drinking? <laughs> no, I just remember that it, it tasted strange, you know? What started me on my tirade of drinking was being at my aunt's house and sneaking into her cabinet having a sip of something. Did she have the fruity hard, stuff or the hardcore shit in her cabinet? She had the hardcore black <laughs> label and red label and all that kind of stuff. She had the hardcore stuff. Did you get a beating hard... afterwards for that? Did you get a beating? I never got caught. I never Whoa. got caught. And I never 
sip enough to get drunk. I just took a sip just to taste it, and that was it. Wow. How about you, House? Well, that was it. That yep. explains it, Colin. You came outside. <laughs> My father had these things, these tasters, these whiskey tasters in, in the cabin. And we used to take a, a, a sheet of them, take them outside and rip them open and suck them, rip them open, and then we get a buzz off of that. But, you know, we, like I said, we did the normal, when they went upstairs, and they would etch the glass. So I see how much whiskey they had, and we would pour water in it. Oh, God. We take some, pour water in it. And we, like I said, they found out. They put X lax in the jug, so they knew we were they knew we were drinking a look at we were shitting. So they beat us. <laughs> they got beat on the toilet. <laughs> they got beat on the toilet bowl. That's just the worst. I'm trying to remember. I remember having both hands turned around and facing the the back of the toilet and getting beat like that. You mean like actually on the shitter getting beat? No, I'm not talking. We're not, we're not, we're not talking about your. I'm not talking about your boyfriend. <laughs> I apologize. I'm bringing up something that happened last week. There's a lot of incest going on in the yard. The boy used to put her hands behind her back and beat her. Yeah, that. Well, if you, we used to get beat for uh, when you're potty trained, and then if you had an accident. I remember uh, my sister, it was her turn to get her ass beat. She was sitting on the, t- and this is like funny, but it's not funny. But she, she was sitting, I guess she shit her pants while she wasn't supposed to. So she's sitting on the toilet bowl and I have this memory of laughing at her. She's got um, the underwear that she shit on over the top of her head. And it's like dri- dri- oh. dripping on her face. And I remember oh, laughing. So, I was, it's, it's so disgusting. It's so bad. Of course it was. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> What's that? I'm surprised you don't strippers. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. I never even had that. I would have been a stripper after that. That's definitely not the daddy issue right there. Yes, the story slipped out. I feel comfortable sharing it because I'm defending what my sister and I had to go through when we were just kids. Some of it was tough and some of it was good, but can't change the fact that it was our childhood. But carry on, guys. My dad was a police officer. Okay. So when he got home from work and my mother would tell him everything that happened, he would take us in the basement and he would say, okay, now what happened? We had two choices at that point. We could tell him the truth and get a beating, or we could lie and get a worse beating. (laughs) So we would probably tell him the truth and got the beating. It was still a bad beating. (laughs) What was your father's name? No Wings Johnson? (laughs) (laughs) We would just get a beating, man. It was bad. We were crying, man. When you were were getting incurred. And crying. When you were interrogated, did he have, like, the light flashing on you in your face? He might as well have, but he <laughs> didn't. But it was part of the whole thing that you'd see on TV with the cops. He would ask us what happened, and we just basically had to tell him the truth. Uh, so we would get it worse. Who was the snitch? Yeah. There was no snitch. My mother would get... Here's what happened. <laughs> like, I remember. <laughs> snitches get yeah. stitches. My mother, my mother would go out and she would buy these white rocks and put them around the shrubs. You know, I know the big rocks, about, the, about bigger than a quarter. Uh-huh. And the kids from the neighborhood would go grab them and they would throw them at each other. And oh, have a rock fight! Oh my god! One time, one of the one of the kids threw a rock at us and it missed us and it hit our front door and smashed the window. <gasps> And so she said, you know, wait till your father gets on, you're going to get it. And she told him what happened. So there was no snitch. You know, the window was broken. <laughs> that was the evidence. <laughs> yeah. And you know, when he said what happened, we just had to, you know, we could say it wasn't our fault. They were throwing rocks at us. Or we could say it was our fault. We were throwing rocks at each other. Wow. But that's how it happened. That's how we got beat. Something like that. My father would come in the house. And he'd say he'd give us a charity job. And we, we allegedly did it, but we didn't. We would get beat, so we learned that 
we better do the chores. If you don't want to get beaten, just do the fucking chores. So we would do the chores, and when he heard, <clears throat> I mean, he was home, and everybody looked at each other, okay, did you do your thing? Did you do yours? Did you do yours? Did you do yours? And one person would go, I forgot. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he, wasn't, he didn't beat one, he beat all. So that he sounds like a military style. One. Yes, military does that. If one person screwed yeah. up, everybody paid for it. I just want to say one thing. We only have one private pile in our crew. You only have what? I got to say one thing. You had me all, we, everybody, you know, my family, we only had one private pile. That the guy that just, just, just couldn't get it right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> private pile, gotcha. <laughs> so that made us, that made us strong for discipline us and everything. I mean, it's stronger, but to go through that boot camp of, of a childhood is just... I gotta say one thing about your dad, man. Your dad was a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a real gangster. <laughs> he, he sounds like a drill sergeant. You probably would have well, went through was, boot camp like was, nothing. He was, he was the first black Italian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was a gangster. <laughs> he was a straight up gangster. He worked in construction. All his boys were Italian. He, he, he. He was mobbed up, man, so... Yeah, he was gangster. <laughs> he, feared, he feared no one. He feared no one. And he taught us not to fear anybody. So when I went to junior high school, from Catholic school, when I went for the Fresh Air Fund to jail... You said Fresh Air Fund to, to jail? Yeah, it's like, Catholic school was the Fresh Air Fund. Okay. Junior high school, public junior high school was jail. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, jail. You know what I'm saying? I mean, kids are smoking cigarettes in the bathrooms, playing radios, and, and cursing, and you owe me lunch money. I don't even know you. How do I owe you? Where did that come from? It was just. But because of my father's tutelage and training and beatings, we, we adjusted to that school life. I can tell you one funny story. Just one? A house didn't go to jail. <laughs> but he went to jail through a mistaken identity. Mm. And when he... <laughs> no, no, no. no. He he he... I was pointed out by a girl who I beat her brothers up. Oh. So to make me pay for that, she got me arrested. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Yeah, but it wasn't his fault. No, I was working in construction at the time. I came home, had a brand new paycheck, money in my pocket, and they said that the money they had in my pocket was the money I stole. <gasps> I showed them my paycheck. They were like, no, so what? We don't care about that. But yeah, the story was that two black guys, two dark skinned guys, robbed somebody, and the cops was looking for them. So. I was, in, I was in the store with two of my friends, and I told them, so you guys better get out of here. The cops are coming, and they're going to get you and arrest you guys, so you better go. Mm -hmm. We're not going. So we played at the arcade, and sure enough, these cops pulled us in the store. Whoa, 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 whoa. They jumped out the car. I said, oh, shit, you guys are going to fucking jail, man. I told them to leave. <laughs> the cop says, you two, move away from that guy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, shut up. Put your hands up. Woo! Ain't you guys looking for two thousand guys? I'm snitching. You just leave the two thousand guys right here. No, we're looking for you. Because they put me up against the wall, handcuffed me, and took me down. So I'm leaving. Those guys are looking at me like, wow, because I'm, I'm not a bad child. I didn't do anything to, to that extent to get arrested. Yeah. They were surprised, and they were the criminals. <laughs> Oh, gosh. No, the, the, the criminals are surprised that I'm getting arrested. So, no, but can, I, can I tell the funniest part of the story? <laughs> <laughs> I get home, and at the time, my dad worked in Rikers Island. And I tell him, let me get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Snitch. <laughs> What'd your dad say? He called him. I'm in jail. I'm in jail. Who's 50 bad? I said, um, that's me. I said, come here. I came to the door. He said, 
You have a phone call. Nobody gets a phone call, man. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know me. You know, everybody's looking. Everybody wants to know what's going on. So I, I took that and ran with Come on, man. I'm somebody to be reckoned with, man. <laughs> so I get on the phone. I say, hello. He goes, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> What you going to do now, tough guy? <laughs> His father ran a basketball program in Rikers Island. And we was in there one day. We would, we would go up there and play against the guys in Rikers Island. And I would just antagonize the guys. You guys are in jail. You're never going to have no sex. <laughs> I'm getting sick. I got hickeys on my neck. Look at my neck. You got suckers. And his father said, yo, stop doing that, man. What would happen to you if you got in here? I said, Mr. Johnson, I handle my business, man. I'm a real G. All right. So that day I got <laughs> the next week, he actually got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Mr. Johnson, because you talked me into this, please, please get me out. Please. <laughs> please. <laughs> please. I looked around, so nobody here. We go, please get me out of here, please. <laughs> what he did, I kept telling people, yo, I thought I'm going to phone so I'll do the best I can do it. I don't know. So I hung the phone, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting out tomorrow. For three weeks, I said that every day. Oh, my God. <laughs> three, weeks? <laughs> three weeks? He moved me around. Yeah, three weeks. He moved me around that whole jail. Three weeks. I'm, I, I went to every part of that jail. He moved me around. Yo, you're moving today. Moving. Oh, my God. Like, oh, you going home? I said, yeah, I'm going home, man. I'm out of here. That motherfucker moved me around the whole jail. Three weeks. I felt like nine years. My gosh. I came out. I was lighter than I was when I went in. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, <laughs> oh, no, I, I'm not, that's not the time to make a, a shower <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you how many times you dropped the soap in the in the shower over there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, like what's your price say? Keep them laughing? That was the funniest food in there, man. Hell yeah, that's survival. I remember working in the uh, Westchester County, putting in uh, conduits for the uh, cameras that we were putting in, and some of the guys didn't like it, so we were telling them, "No, this is going to help you. So if any of the guards mess with you, you got you got videotape." Like, oh yeah, yeah, I like that. So of course, one of my uh, coworkers was telling them. I wasn't in one day. They said she was at a fight. She's an MMA fighter. So, of course, they were going with it. They were asking me about my fight and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the time that I was in jail. Uh was having to work in there. <laughs> yeah, I was in there for a couple of months. <laughs> working on and I was glad uh, to get out of there they had a, a psych patient they were taking down the hallway and every time they're bringing somebody down you have to like stop what you're doing and move to the side so inside, yeah. yeah and they were <clears throat> bringing this psych patient that used to like to take her feces and throw it at people I guess she spit on me they didn't have her little mask they yes. had like a little right. net that they put yeah. on their face yeah. They didn't have it on her. So what she do? She spits on me and spits on my partner. It's humid in the old jail. And they go to put out this commercial grade uh, mace to try to take her down. There's five people trying to take that bitch down. And it was like the gas chamber and boot camp. The whole air permeated with the mace. So here my partner, I go to lock arms with him. I can't even see. I got, my eyes are tearing. And we're running down the hallway like gangbusters to get into... Um, into medical and we were gonna clothesline somebody we didn't give a fuck we're leaving our tools here the co that was watching it's on you buddy we're out of here <laughs> they were making fun of us after that i was that was the westchester county jail uh, i worked in um Nassau county the dudes the guys in the chow line used to leave a bag of food with my name on a paper bag right where the gate was where we went in to where our tools were locked up and they were like what the fuck leslie and i'm like what you think I put my order in? And one of the guys, <laughs> the guy, and the, one of the guys goes, "If you have any fucking pull in here, you need to get some shrimp ramen noodles, right?" So I, I ended up getting shrimp ramen noodles. I'm like, I got some pull in here, I guess. I, <laughs> I used to joke that I'd be all right 
if there was a riot, but probably uh, would end up being on <laughs> the line of the line that you don't want to be on. <laughs> That's interesting. I, I worked in the jail myself, and uh, they had an emergency call, so we were short nurses. And I went with uh, my boy, his name is Calvin, he's one of the head nurses. He said, Come on, come on, let me help pick the guy up or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I went with him. And I was like, Yeah, the nurse is here. One guy goes, Wait a minute. That guy ain't no nurse. He's housekeeping. And the whole place started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> One of the guards told us, you ever been in the Westchester County? There's like a basement area. And I guess back in the 80s or 70s, that's where they used to, now they're more humane with people. One of the guards was telling us that there was a certain area where they used to bring in someone who was, say, on high on heroin or had AIDS or whatever. They put them in this one cell and these people were detoxing and dying, like right in this area where you got to... A gate you got one gate to bring you in and then you got the second gate right in that area before the the first gate people were dropping back in the day you know and dying in the bathroom wow. yeah he That's sad, it's part of the past now people would send somebody to medical and have them detox and stuff like that apparently 30 years ago they didn't so we thought our parents were rough you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they the were like, of the law were <laughs> yeah, yeah, the law and order. They, my dad definitely was the sheriff back then. He ran uh, <laughs> everything. Between the two of you, would you say your dad was the guy, or would you say your mom uh, was out there beating some ass when she had to, or would it mostly be your dad? When it comes to my I family, they all was out there. Mother, <laughs> <laughs> father, sisters, everybody. It was. Who was the family not to fuck with? I would say in my family, it was my dad that would, would do the beatings. My dad and my grandmother. She my was the one they would call, would right? No, my dad was the one that they would call. My <laughs> grandmother would beat you on the spot. <laughs> wait, wait, you talking about beating the children or the protector of the family outside the hood? No, the beating of the children. Oh, yeah, yeah. My older sisters, yeah, okay. Yeah, go ahead, Kyle. I mean, he's right. Oh, yeah, my mom. have to call anybody. It's just kind of beast. Yeah, my, my mother, no, my father would be the one that would give us the beatings. But my grandmother, if we did something wrong, like I remember we wet her with a hose once, she'd beat the crap out of us. <laughs> you want your grandmother with a hose? Yeah. We thought it was funny. She didn't think it was so funny. I messed with my grandma, too, when I was a kid. She had cataracts and used to move stuff around, uh, killed some some garden snakes and, and hung them up when they were dead on the clothesline and sat around the corner Jesus. waiting for her. Wow. <laughs> she was like, you guys! <laughs> yeah. You're like we were evil. We were evil, yeah. Well, we thought it was like a joke. You know, when you were a kid, you think it's funny. Mm -hmm. Let's Let's switch clothes. So she had no idea. She was talking to my sister, thinking it's me. You know, and vice versa. And <laughs> then she would grab one of us by the shoulders and bring us in, like, real close to her face. And she goes, you're not Kimmy. <laughs> I'm like, wow, he busted me. <laughs> that was, like, really, really sick. Well, we did some stuff that probably you guys would have been afraid to do. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah, we, 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 we didn't do that because my whole family was just from the Bronx and they're just mean as shit. So, like, the older kids were mean. You did something wrong, like you get in trouble with your uncle or your um, cousin or something, and you're mad at you, you should have did that and get into a little fight. These guys will fight to like the death. So you knew if you was going to get into a fight with your family members, you knew this. It was going to rally to, around. To, yeah, it's just, so you had to really think about the jokes you want to pull. My uncle was our age. My uncle, he was our age, and he, he was like, like a mean jokester, like you're sleeping, She's going to glue your ass cheeks together. He's a fucker. To, he's to a pull fucker. that off while you're sleeping and you not know? That's impressive. Yeah, shove a pen in your ass like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, like, what the fuck, yo? <laughs> <laughs> we put toothpaste on the <laughs> toilet seat. We thought that was funny. <laughs> well, yeah. he's, a, he's the kind of guy that would smoke a cigarette, right? He said, you want to see smoke come out of my eyes? 
I said, yeah. He was pulling pull the smoke in. As he got closer, he picked the cigarette and burned me with it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick, man. Yeah, man. So, My- you know, I, this is why I am, I, I am who I am today. Thanks to them. Did you ever have, like, Thanksgiving dinners and Christmas dinners? Mine? No, I'm asking house. Yeah, yeah. That, my father was family oriented. Your family, y'all had to be in at certain times, so did we. But we wasn't in there. He'd lock the refrigerator. You don't get to eat. Y'all would, oh, okay. Kyle, I don't feel plate on the table. Thank you, mother. I no, thought... Not my house. <laughs> You're going to starve. I thought locking the cabinet was kind of rude, but I I hear that's something that happens a lot. You like the cabinet, the refrigerator, and the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, grew, I grew up in a nice house. <laughs> <laughs> See, you thought you thought my my parents were over the top. This that sounds ridiculous too to lock everything up. What do you got to fumble for the key? What if you lose the key to the refrigerator? <laughs> Listen, father, we never even had a key on our refrigerator. My father would, would, would say that, you know, money is hard to come by. Money don't grow on trees. No. You guys can't waste food. Don't waste food. Don't pick in food. Don't do this. Don't do that. Because everybody's not of us. So we all had to eat in rations. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So yep. if, we, if they made a meal for us, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be for us for that, that night. And then there's no leftovers sometimes. Mm hmm. And, and oh, he said enough food for three days. So if I got food for three days, it's gonna last three days. Yeah. That you ask. And if you don't, you're not there in time to eat. It's done. Oh, I would imagine there's a competition for the food, right? Does that make somebody eat fast as an adult? Eat who? Like when when you're in competition no. for food because you got a big household, right? And you almost feel like you got to eat fast. So if you eat fast, you can go in for seconds. So then as an adult, you catch yourself eating fast because that's something you learned as a kid. No, when we eat fast, that means we just going to go outside. Oh, gotcha. You know, I used to love that too, yeah. Can I, can I have some more? Like this, our, our family's like all of them. Mm-hmm. When the first person goes, can I have more, sir? No, it was that. We didn't have, we didn't have the all of the family. We, you ate fast to go back outside. Yeah. I remember that. Now you're hungry when you come back in. So when, when, by the time you come back in, if you miss snack time, you're gonna, your stomach's going to growl all night. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, this is the thing, the thing you had to do to to live in, in a neighborhood where it's, it's middle class. Mm-hmm. Sort of like the Joneses thing, but I mean, they wanted a better life for the kids. We had to adapt to them. We don't know about that. We don't know what it was like to work and, and, and Kids, kids, and stuff like that. So we may have complained about it, but yeah. the day, we didn't know. Did both of your parents work house? Yeah. Yeah, both, both mine had to work worked. too. They both started in the post office. My father went into uh, construction, and my mother became a nurse. So yeah, they they, they did their thing. They held it down. Kyle, Kyle, did both your parents work? My father was a police officer. Yeah. And my mother was a teacher. Okay. Mine uh, all had to work. I remember my mom having to work multiple jobs with the whole minimum wage thing. I remember back in the 80s, she was getting $3 and 70 something cents an hour. And she used to have to work at a nursing home folding sheets or something like that. I remember her always hustling. She worked as a gas station attendant. She was always working. I remember that as a, as a kid. My dad worked in the uh, sawmill. Um, because Oregon's all about lumber and the timber industry and stuff like that. So I remember he was a logger for a while, and then he was in the lumber yard or whatever, the mill, creating the two-by-fours and the plywood and everything like that. You know what I find interesting? And I, I see this in a lot of movies. I asked my mother how come she didn't get an afro. She said that she never got an afro because that wasn't, like, the thing to do at the time, you know? Mm-hmm. She would always have like a hair perm, like you would see in the movies, where the women would wear the dresses and they'd wear the perm, the permed hair and all like that. But she never wore an afro. I asked her why. She said because that was like the rebel thing to do. You uh-huh. know, Angela Davis wore the afro, mm-hmm. but she, she never wore an afro. I remember. Until she was like much later yeah. in her life. 
I was a kid in, in boot camp, and I remember a young lady, she had a kit, and she was doing her hair, and I remember being confused. <laughs> she goes, whatever, Clausen. Because I had asked her, why are you putting that in your hair? Isn't your hair curly already? She goes, no, it's to straighten my hair out, jack jackass. I was like, oh, well, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> I was honestly very perplexed. I had no idea. I learned. I learned a lot. So she would wear it to. She would wear it to straighten her hair. Yes. And you would say, "Yeah, but you got curly hair. Why are you making your hair straight?" Yes, I was. <laughs> I was following logic. I was like, "What? I don't understand." I learned uh, quite a few things from different people. You know, when you when you go in the mili- in the military, you're, you're around all walks of life, different people from different parts of the country. I think it's an enriching experience to travel and, and go to different places. Speaking of that, did you guys do any traveling once you became young people and finished your childhood? Uh, yeah. I, I think I went to Puerto Rico. I think the furthest I went was Puerto Rico. How about the U.S.? You you uh, check out California? Oh, Florida. We did a bus trip to Florida. I, did, uh, I went to Pennsylvania. Uh, Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> in the Jersey. So I was too much in the street to go anywhere because I couldn't. I don't know. I was, was I went to limitation up already. Mm-hmm. I, I went to San Francisco to see a woman. Nice. I went to Grand Canyon. Uh, of course, I went to Florida. Uh, you did it on the bike, right, Kyle? No, I didn't go on the motorcycle. Oh, okay. I wanted to, but it's it, it got too crazy now. Yeah, you know, I figured if I if I got on the bike and went across country, I'd get pulled over by a bank a biker gang and killed. I actually sold the bike too. Really? Oh. Yeah, I sold my motorcycle. I figured you, that's why you get into a bike club and then you guys all go in numbers, like strength in numbers. Well, I wanted to do that, but I never did. I want to get one of those can ams. What's that? He totally destroyed my fantasy. He said he got beat up by, by bikers. I wanted him to, like, when he got tired, pulled over and camped in the woods, he'd get raped by a bear. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say the uh, the chainsaw massacre guy. No, I was just trying to get raped by a bear. And I want the bear to just, you know, rub him on the shoulder and say, look, it's going to be okay, and just walk off. <laughs> 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 You'll be that, all right. That never happened. Have that some, never happened. He's holding him by his neck, so he's got some claw marks on the side of his neck. Yeah. <laughs> no, he had the claw marks on his hips. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, how did you get those marks? I was fighting a bear <laughs> Have you guys... <laughs> As a kid... <laughs> As a kid, we used to go camping... That was like our way of, say, going somewhere, because I don't ever remember going on vacation or anything like that, but that was our thing to do in the spring and um, summer and fall. Have you guys ever went camping? If not, would you be interested in going camping? Well, I, was a boy I went camping with the Boy Scouts here. Yeah. What did you say, House? I went... Like Kyle said, yeah, I was a Boy Scout. And all we did was go camping. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I life so now, would you do it as an adult? Uh, yeah, with some scary chicks. <laughs> it's... Oh, hold me! Oh, what's that noise? Hold me! Hold me! Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right, baby. I'm here to protect you. They have... <laughs> they have cabins these days, so one doesn't have to rough it by uh, doing a sleeping bag on the floor. I know, God knows I wouldn't be able to get up. that on the air. Some woman, I want to get to the camping ground. Tell me there's no cabins. You just ruined it. <laughs> I'm really gonna get none. Well, you got cabins. You got um, um, RVs and stuff like that. They got they got lean tunes. They got all kind of shit. We I, I, we did the cabin. We did the camping. We did the teepees. We did the tents. Did all that stuff. Any place? Got a match with axe. <laughs> Any place on your bucket list that you guys want to check out in the U.S. that you've never done before? In the U.S., let's Any see. place wanna, in the U.S., I yeah. In the U.S., I want to do a Philippine girl. That's, no, she said place. place not a person. place, not a person. Oh, 
that's okay. a, that's another episode, House. I want to go. I want to go to Filipino in New York and the United States. <laughs> I mean, it's like Filipino girl. The Philippines is out of the country. You got all kinds of stuff going on in Manhattan. Every place in the world, right? That's right. So, like, with college, with, 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 the, with the Hindus and the thing box and the, and the um, what do you call them, Kyle? The Guyanese, all the people in that smorgasbord area that make sure they get a house, they just get rid of the fucking front lawn. <laughs> There's things going on everywhere, man. Yeah, you know what they do. I was like, oh, I like this very interesting house. Let's buy it. As soon as they buy it, first thing to do, they don't renovate inside. Just get rid of the fucking front lawn, ladies and gentlemen. So, are, so are you trying to like say? To <laughs> are you trying to say that there's so much going on in in New York City that we don't need to go anywhere because you get a little slice of everyone around the globe just being here? This is a, this is a melting pot. Of agreed. I would like to go to the Midwest. I'd like to go back to. Um... Grand Canyon. It's beautiful. The Grand Canyon, I remember as a kid doing a motorhome trip from Oregon all the way to Texas, and I remember the Grand Canyon. I thought it was beautiful. Yeah, I've been there before, but I want to go back. So none of you I mentioned Vegas. Back. I didn't hear any of you say... I have, I have only been to Vegas. I've, only been I've, been, I've been to Vegas, and I don't really want to go back to Vegas. What happened? I went there, I got, I got drunk, I got lost. I couldn't even find my way out of the hotel. I knew there I was a bad story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go back to Vegas. <laughs> Not, neither one of you ever want to go to California and check out Hollywood? Or... I've been to San Francisco. I want to go to Oakland. I want to go, I want to go everywhere that I've heard. You know? I I've been to... to... I came out of Florida. It's wonderful. Yeah, Kyle snitched on you that you were coming back today. Oh, did he? Or yesterday. Yeah. No. I've been to Oakland. I liked Oakland. I've been to San Francisco. Uh, I've been to Wisconsin. I like Wisconsin. Uh, where else have I been? Where, where in Wisconsin? In Madison? I've been to Madison. Okay. Mm -hmm. I went out in the woods. I had a friend that had a... Had a um, a home, a log cabin out in Madison. I went out there. Beautiful. beautiful. Nice. Yeah. I remember as a kid, my step grandparents were building a log cabin. It's a beautiful thing to to watch it being constructed and what it looks like the end end product with the external log walls. It was a uh -huh. really cool experience. I would love to to do one in the future, maybe up in Montana or something. Yeah, I would definitely love to do that as well. I, I liked it. Out there. Well, let's book a trip. Let's all go to Montana. Yes. Some peanut butter whiskey. We could record and, it. Uh, yeah, and we'll just take one sleeping bag. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, cause we can't close it, so we'll just leave it open and just lay there. And the it rains, we get all soaking wet and bugs are biting on us. Like on a pile of rocks, right? No. We gotta have no. a pile of rocks to no. lay on. The answer is no. <laughs> Affirmative we'll no. With, with, we'll fish with twigs and string. <laughs> you know? I'm not getting in a sleeping bag with you. I, I have my own. Anymore, bag. right? No, no. <laughs> no. I'm not getting in a sleeping bag. Wow. Wow. Anymore. Wow. She's got a lot of information, Kyle. I don't know where she's getting it from. Oh, well, I'm trying to figure <laughs> out why you want the sleeping bag with all three of us. <laughs> you must have done at least <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> well, you know, we're trying, we're trying to rush it. <laughs> no, it's something wrong. Oh, oh, trying to share, <laughs> share resources? Yeah, we're trying to rush it. Man. Well, what's next? Yeah, Are you going to do Baby yeah. Bird, where you chew some food and spit it in mine and Kyle's mouth? Is that, <laughs> is that goes with the sleeping bag? I don't know. I don't know whether it's going to be a cold or get a heart. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you're appalled. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> I didn't ask you guys, what are the three things that, that come off of the top of your head that you took away from your childhood, maybe brought it to your own kids, or do you have more or less? Like some certain key pieces of your childhood that... You said, you know what, this I'm going to throw it to the side because it has no value. 
or I'm going to take this and then teach my kids the same way. Can I answer that question? Yeah, please? absolutely. I'd say the thing that I brought from my childhood that I liked was okay. fishing. Okay. Two things. Fishing, I loved fishing, and I still love fishing. I got a whole bunch of rods and reels, and I go fishing every summer. Mm -hmm. That I love. And my love of vinyl records. I got a great vinyl record collection, and I listen to it all the time. Kyle, did you have any kids? That's, I had no kids. Okay. I didn't know if you were going to pass your vinyl collection on to your kids. Yeah. I haven't figured out who I'm going to give the vinyl collection to. Hmm. When it's my time. Maybe the library? <laughs> Museum? I want it to be personal. I want it to be something, someone personal that gets it. Uh, okay. That's something to think about. Yeah, it is. How about you, House? Things that uh, your family instilled in you and you took it and did it with your children. Being a family. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. Being a family. I mean, look after each other, be strong with each other. Um, achieve the best you can, be the best you can. Mm -hmm. And just love one another, man. That's it, man. I mean, you can do that. You can go anywhere. You can be anything. So, that's what it is. That's what they're instilled in. I remember a key takeaway for me is uh, be a person of your word and you, do not tell someone you're going to do something unless you do it and be like the bank as far as that's concerned. Obviously taking care of the kids and trying to save as much for a rainy day. I remember that. that was a, oh, beautiful. Sometimes you feel like the kids uh, don't try to honor that. They, they try to skate around it but you're like wait that's the value that you expect out of me you should expect it out of yourself and then expect it out of your kids someday yeah you guys well, have any other we were raised, what's that we were raised right we were raised right we grew up in a nice neighborhood and what we're doing now we're trying to give back to the community by getting to community getting to the community and try to involve ourselves using the radio station using that platform mm-hmm and second shift is always going to be, well, we'll say we have an open door policy. So if you have any problems, man, just give us a call. So if the second shift can be your heroes, mm -hmm. here you go. Remind uh, people where, do you guys have a website? No. Uh, I'm not sure where the website is right now. Okay. But um, we will have it put together shortly. Well, yeah, I, I could direct people because I will blog, and of course I will share once I have this loaded up as a podcast, and you guys are going to have it as well. Okay. Um, then at that time, when you guys give me info, I can add it to my blog post. That's beautiful. That way everybody uh, can grab it and, and go check you guys out. You guys said you're on radio.co? Radio.co. Dot .co. Yes, radio.co. The, the name of the station is called On the Block Radio Station. And you guys have different guests, but it runs the gamut. Explain the people that you have that come on. We have people that come on that pertain to music. We have people that come on that pertain to politics. And we have people that come on that pertain to food. So we have chefs, we have politics. And we have music people. We've, we've had radio station DJs. We've had doctors come on. We've had police officers. We've had novelists. We've had all types of people. Authors, right? We've had authors. authors. Engineers. We're to the next level and have strippers. Have strippers? I, I don't want to have strippers. <laughs> I don't want to have strippers. I would like to witness the foolery. So, you guys, if you schedule that, I'd like to be there in person to witness that. <laughs> I, I will not have strippers on this show. <laughs> well, we're going to at least have one contest, the biggest boobs contest. I will not do that. I will not degrade myself and have that on this show. <laughs> you, see, you see how selfish it is? He will not degrade himself. When I say degrade a woman, I want to degrade myself. Well, I'd be degrading myself if I had a woman that was a stripper on the show. I didn't know Kyle felt that well, way. I mean, either. Yeah. Well, now, now you know. 
Wait, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I tell you one thing that Leslie used to do? We used to, work together, we used to work together at an engineering office. And Leslie, along with some of the other ladies, used to tell the foulest jokes. <laughs> And I used to try to sit there and just do my work and not even react. <laughs> yeah, he did. He tried to be stone faced. I tried to be stone faced and would just go at it with each other. <laughs> These people are crazy. <laughs> I'm so used to it. It's a probably what House would probably agree that it's a survival being able to be sharp and, and give quick retorts. Because if not, someone could eat you alive. <laughs> I could see if House was there, he would stop, turn around, and join in in the foolery. Hell yeah! <laughs> we'd still be there laughing. <laughs> I totally expect to get invited to one of you guys' barbecues or outings this summer. I'm totally expecting it, so let's make oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, I'm on the guest I'm list. Yeah. All right, perfect. Yeah, I'm on a bicycle. You're on a bicycle. I'm on a bike right now. Yeah, I'm I'm in a, uh, I'm in a place where they're gonna stretch me out because I'm in physical therapy right now, so it's gonna be a little bit of noise, and I don't mean the bikes. It's all right. I think we've had quite a bit of content uh, in order on this childhood memories uh, segment. You guys were great with your offerings of your childhoods, and a snapshot into your different home lives, and it's appreciated. And of course, uh, I know another time that we all have to get together and pick out a different topic and I'll come hang out with you guys the next time so that way uh, we could record and we it. Love, and, and we love having you. Absolutely. I appreciate yes. it. I appreciate you guys coming on as well. I, I can't wait to uh, get this loaded and, and share. Okay. I wish you guys all a great day. I'm going to say to the audience, uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions or you want to check out other content, head over to my website at www.constructiontales.com. Thanks to Kyle and House for coming on here to talk about childhood memories. And I wish you guys all a great day. Take care. This wraps up another episode on the Verbally Disastrous podcast that can be found on Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. For more information, head over to www.constructiontales.com. Thank you for listening, and have a great one.